Okay, live for recording. Welcome to the coming Janice book launch. I'm going to meet some more people. Okay. A lot of reverb. There we go. So, Jeannie, uh, over to you. Um, we'll do some introductions, I think, but um, I'll, I'll get. I'll make sure our guests that are going to talk can speak. Are you so, waiting for me to say something? Uh, you know, something, hello or whatever. Oh, well, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs> How nice to see you. Some faces I haven't seen in a long time. And some faces I'm seeing for the first time. Welcome. Perfect. So uh, uh, today uh, we're delighted to have uh, Becoming Janice is finally out in the world. It's real. This is the launch. It's published uh, here in Canada, publisher Iguana Books. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, from uh, Iguana Books, uh, Cheryl, uh, who has been unmuted to say a few words and get us started. So welcome, Cheryl. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hi, Gini. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I think Greg was supposed to say a few words, so I'm not prepared, but Greg couldn't get in. Um, but we're very excited about the book. Uh, we love the cover. Greg actually said it's the nicest cover we've ever published. So there you go. Uh, I made sure to give Chris and Gini lots of credit because they had a lot of input. Um, and uh, yeah, it seems like a well-received book. We're really excited. And congratulations. Thank you. Let's hope the pre-orders are turning into sales. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Greg, um, we'll, we'll give Greg an opportunity when I find him on the scroll here. I don't have him in the waiting room and he's not here yet. So I'm sure he'll turn up. Um, so um, uh, Gini, over to you for the intros and, and thank yous. All right. Now. This is going to be a bit like the Oscars, and I'm going to do a Sally Field, but I've got a whole laundry list of names of people I want to thank, but I'll, I'll try and keep to the point. Um, the writing. Well, I did the writing, but not alone. I had readers helping me, and starting with Karina, my development editor, and the beta readers, Alexandra, Annie, and Lindy, whose comments helped me hone the draft into readable shape. And Eddie Buddy, Jill, for giving the draft to once over. Thanks, Jill. Then we come to the publishing. And um, I want to thank Greg, in his absence, for his flattery. He said Iguana would be proud to publish Janice. And I was really thrilled to hear that. And then I want to say a huge thanks to Cheryl for putting up with a drama queen throughout the process. And Cheryl, you did have to put up with a lot, I know. Um, and then, very importantly, I want to thank the Iguana editors, Paula, Amanda, Julia, and Holly, for their meticulous enhancements to the quality of my book. I'm very, very grateful to all the editors because they, they really have um, put the finishing gloss on the book. Then we come to the marketing. Chris, my guru, my marketing guru, my hand holder supreme, helping me right from the start. And he was hugely influential in choosing the right cover for Janice. Um, my, first, my first cover for Janice was a photo of a girl on a bike on an Amsterdam bridge. And Chris looked at it and he said, but your book's not a travel log, is it? And then he suggested very, very subtly um, that I might have second thoughts about the cover. And under his guidance, we came up with um, Jonathan, the actual designer, we came up with this. And I must say that everybody who has seen the book loves the cover. I'm thrilled. 
um, especially because the colors were outside my comfort zone, but I've, I've grown used to it. So, Chris, my big thanks to you. And your job hasn't finished yet. Um, part of the marketing is um, spreading the word. And um, Chris was very influential in helping me get um, the blurbs for the back cover. Because, you know, there's a maximum publishing blurbs sell books. And um, the names that we got for the back cover are important names, big influences in their fields. And they wrote me honest, I hope, your checks in the mail, uh, reviews, which, is, which are, are on the back cover. And I'm very grateful to four people in particular, Manda, Kathy, Lindsay, and Aifka for their blurbs. Now, past the blurbs, we get the reviewers and the reviewers are the readers. And so far, I've had wonderful, wonderful responses from Gail, from Lyra, from Cortez and Mayan. And hopefully these are the first of many more reviewers. Because altogether now, blurbs sell books. OK, moving on, moving right along, we come, we come to the Foggies. The Foggies is my affectionate term for Friends of Guinea. And that's all of you, friends and family, for coming tonight online and in person, helping me celebrate Janice. And then those of you who have seen a copy of the book, have seen inside the book, may have noticed that I've dedicated it to two women, to Taya and to Faye. Now, this is not a lesbian couple, I'm sorry to say. It's my mother and my aunt. And both, I got my writing talent from mum and Tante Faye, my aunt. She was one of the first people who encouraged me to write. So I'm indebted to them both. And that's why I dedicated the book to them. All right, now I said I was doing a Sally Field. So I'll quote her, well, nearly. When she got the Oscar, the, the, her second Oscar, she said, I can't deny the fact, right now you like Janice. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Am I allowed to shut up now? <laughs> well, that was that was excellent and uh, 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 it, it, you know, when they say that it takes a village to put something together, that uh, becoming Janice is a perfect example of that. So, uh, so there's going to be an opportunity to uh, to ask questions, um, and um, I'm going to ask a couple of questions to kind of set the mood. Gini's going to do a reading uh, from her book, and uh, then there'll be a chance to ask some questions now. On your screens, you'll see down at the bottom, if you're seeing the same thing as me, uh, there's a little hand next to a smiley face. The hand means, you know, like you're raising your hand, you can ask a question. If you've got something, I'll look, I'll look for the hands. Um, and uh, 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 Gini, are you okay to answer a few questions about becoming Janice from, from, from myself? Just, you know, some of you have read the book, some of you, it's, there, there'll be no spoilers. So, you know, feel free to buy a second or third copy, uh, you know, uh, now to enjoy it all the more. Uh, one of the things I was most curious about reading the book is The Coming Janice is set in 1979, 1980, you know, not, not the 90s, not the aughts, nothing like that. It's an exciting time, lots of stuff going on, no cell phones, uh, no Wi-Fi, uh, you know, uh, you know, no streaming. Uh, so there's lots of things that filled in that space. But I'm wondering, how did you decide to set, set the book in that uh, particular time frame? Okay, that's a good question. Um, let me start by saying the book is fiction. Total, total fiction. But it is based on reality. 
And I happened to live in London in 1979. And I happened to come to Amsterdam in 1980. And I chose that time period because um, I need distance from what I'm writing about. Um, I, wanted, I wanted this book to be rooted in reality. I didn't want it to be a fictional place. In my first book, I created a fictional town. And this one I wanted to root in London and Amsterdam, so I had to know them. Um, I couldn't go back to London to check how it is now, so that was, I had to depend on memory. But Amsterdam, I went down to Amsterdam and checked out the, the streets that she walked to see what the distances were and, and what you see when you look around. I mean, it's quite different to doing a walk on Google Maps and being there in real life. So to get back to, to your question, why that time? It was because it was my time there. 1979 and 1980. Yes. Well, that, that's that's what that must be what gives it the authenticity. So uh, you know um, now your previous book uh, uh, received accolades for what we will term your good sex writing. Now that's a you know uh, that's a lot of pressure you know to have that out there. That's that someone came right up and said this is this is a great book. And it had good sex writing in it. So um, I'm wondering, you know, as you spent a few more years putting uh, uh, becoming Janice together, whether that was uh, an inspiration to 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 do things, or did it encumber you because now you're, uh, you know, it's out there and you have to live up to it. Um, you know, I didn't even think of it. What I did think of was that. Um, I was more concerned with issues that I had I hadn't been concerned with writing the first book because the first book was was just was written in white heat and, and wasn't really written with the reader in mind. It was uh, it was my story and I was telling it. This book um, I approached rather differently because I wanted it to be a book for readers. I wanted to tell the story and I wanted to get it across. So what was important to me was um, not to be graphic. Because um, if I watch a film and they get really graphic, it turns me off. I wanted to be a bit more subtle. So there is suggestion, but there is the space. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember the old uh, Claudette Colbert and uh, what's his name movie, the one where they're, they're hitchhiking together. Well, films from that era, they show the first kiss and then it's the morning after and there's that space where you can fill it in for yourself and I, I find that much more subtle far far more discreet and more interesting because it makes you use your own mind so um to answer your question I wasn't bothered about Philippa at all because it wasn't relevant it was my concern was was to to write for the reader and not turn anyone off because, yeah, they're lesbians, they're having lesbian sex, but they're people enjoying having sex, so um, it can be relatable. That was what I was aiming for anyway. Well, it's great because before I knew you, before I knew much about you, of course, before working with anyone, I have to go online and read everything I can about them because it's not 1979, I can do that. Um, and uh, there it was good sex writing and i thought wow okay let's get this let's let's work with let's work with guinea and uh absolutely a hundred percent for those of you who have not enjoyed uh one or either books it's true very 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 uh well done and uh it's something that's very easy to do badly and wrong because uh, we all love books we've all read books and and as you put it guinea turned off by that this was great so full points uh, on that one. Um, now, speaking of that, not to give too much away, but one of my favorite parts of becoming Janice was a feminist theater troupe called the Thalia Thespians. Uh, it, it causes my dental work great pain to to get those two words out together, which I'm sure was part of the part of the fun. But uh, it's just so so uh detailed and, and and wonderfully real i have to ask if there was any sort of real life inspiration for the thalia thespians 
Well, I can see Annie chortling into her fist here. Annie Perkins was the director of a theatre group called Tangent Theatre. Annie and I, we met um, in Amsterdam. When I first arrived, uh, I joined Esther, the English-speaking theatre of Amsterdam. And Annie and I, um, we were both in Esther. And then Annie, Annie broke off. She went off at a tangent from, from the main theatre group, and that's why she called her group Tangent. I have to point out very, very clearly, and Annie knows this herself, that Hannah is in no way Annie, no way whatsoever. Hannah is a figment of my imagination. But the basics of Thalia thespians, or as Colin, the gay guy in the book in the comic relief, he calls them labia lesbians. You're all allowed to laugh now. Um, um the 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 play that the group the theater group is vaguely based on tangent yes and i did use the fact that uh, tangent had produced a production of deuce of fish sash and vi because again um that was something i knew and i had to do a lot of research because i'd forgotten half of it um but it was convenient it, it fell into my plot so the answer is um, yes, there was a real basis for it, but totally, totally, totally fictionalized. Please nod if you agree, Annie. I've, I've actually, <laughs> I've, I've un unmuted Annie, who's as her new agent, I'm gonna ask what percentage of the, of the sales of, of becoming Janice Annie gets as, as uh, in a role. But Annie, uh, is, are you, you're all okay with this stuff? Oh, absolutely, I get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah, well, you get to direct the film, darling. Oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> um, well, I've got I got one more question, uh, and then uh, Gini's going to do a little reading from the book. Um, and uh, it's funny uh, with some of what we've been talking about is there's there's a recurring theme in uh, becoming Janice, where Janice is really noticing a lot of accents you know and, and here in canada you know the only other canadian i know for sure on this call is cheryl so i'm, I'm like i you know canada is a wonderful melting pot situation we have people from all kinds of cultures here but we're really you know we're kind of famous for not actually having an accent uh uh when stanley kubrick was was doing 2001 a space odyssey he wanted the hal 9000 computer to have really no specific accent and when the production manager said well how do we do that he said canadians he said canadians don't have any accent at all so cheryl and i can blithely go through our work, work day not really paying attention to accents yet in the book janice is is you know at every turn she's identifying all manner of things through accents so as the kids would say what's up with that Katie? How how did that work um well, you know, um, you make me aware of something that I wasn't aware of. Um, I think I'm projecting my own my my own um, response, my own sensitivities into Janice. I find accents very, very beautiful. Um, I have fallen in love with women because they sounded so nice. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, I, the, I had a tremendous crush on my geography teacher because she came from England and a posh English accent in New Zealand was something, oh, delirious. I'll never forget her saying, the undulating hills of the Pennines. Um, oh, okay. wow. wow. Yes. So I, I, have, <laughs> I have a soft spot for the accent. And... Um, I think subconsciously I used it to um, point to the fact that Janice is, is an outsider. She can she can hear different accents because her own accent is different. I think I think um, that was something subliminal there. But my own um, I love beautiful voices, so um, that's the answer to that. Beautiful. What what an answer. Now, even having read the book now, that gives me a whole different uh, element to, to parse. And speaking of beautiful accents, of course, there's yours, 
Vini. So uh, it seems like we uh, amazingly, uh, my questions have provoked a couple of questions from people, but we're going to let you do uh, a reading from the book now, if your if your household of of friends will support that. Okay. Um, I've chosen to read. Um, sorry, Chris, not a sex scene. Um, it's a flirtation. Janice has arrived in Amsterdam. She's run away from what's happened to her in London, and she's moved into a hostel. And she's made a best friend, a new best friend, a boy called Colin. And Colin has found them a job um, as data entry typists. They don't need any Dutch for that because it's all numbers. And Janice has got a tremendous crush on the trainer of the department, a woman called Hannah. So um, this is from chapter 25. Are you ready? Are you all sitting comfortably? Janice lingered in the corridor outside the training unit, pretending to read the notices on the bulletin board, hoping for a glimpse of, of Hannah. The trainer wasn't in. Sleeping in the noisy dormitory, working in the clatter of data entry, Janice found it a rare luxury to be somewhere quiet alone. She raised her arms and slowly stretched her back, eyes closed totally relaxed. The faintest jingle of bangles intruded on her. Anna, standing there with that familiar smile teasing her lips, a rolled up poster tucked under an arm. Well, 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 what a workout, said Hannah, casting a languid gaze up and down the length of Janice's slender body. Aren't you the fit one? It wasn't a question. I was having a stretch, Janice gulped. How long have you been there? Hannah could throw Janice off kilter with just one look, and right now she was doing it, gazing up at her through half-hooded eyes with that charismatic smile, half frivolous, half serious. She ignored the question. Please stretch yourself out of the way. Janice stepped aside so that Hannah could pin the poster onto the board. Janice bent down to read. Thalia Thespians present Dusa Fish, Sash and Vi by Pam Jens. Like the artwork? Without waiting for an answer, Hannah continued, know the play? It's about female friendship, very funny. She gave Janice a look, and I'm directing it. You're a director? Really? A real theatre director? Not just a pretty face or just your trainer. I'm the director of TT. TT? repeated Janice, her racing heart keeping her from making sense. Thalia Thespians, TT for short, named after Thalia, the Greek goddess of comedy, one of the muses you know. We do feminist theatre, acting in English. Are you interested in women's theatre? Janice was struck dumb. How amazing that Hannah was a director of a theatre group. The heavy fire door at the end of the corridor banged open. Colin swung round the corner and stopped at the sight of Janice and Hannah, standing too close together. Oops, sorry, lassies. Am I disturbing a private tete-a-tete? -tete? He broke into a wicked grin. Or do I mean a tit a tit Only Colin could get away with a crack like that. Hannah gave him a wink. Janice glared, but he ignored her and approached the, the notice board. Oh, look, it's a Pam Gems play. Do some fish, etc. Would you believe I saw it when it was on at the Fringe back in when? Must have been mm, 1976. But then it was called Dead Fish. They changed the name when it went to the West End. Fringe? What fringe? How do you know this stuff? The Edinburgh Fringe, you eejit. Why wouldn't I know? Because A, it was only four years ago. And two, I've got a memory like a magpie. Never forget a thing. Or do I mean elephant? Anyway, it's terrific. A bit women's Libby, but I liked it. Where's it on? Cafe Sokohoff. Janice and Hannah spoke in unison. Janice was mortified to see Hannah smiling up at her. Hannah seemed unconcerned, winked again at Colin and turned to enter her office. Over her shoulder, she fired a parting shot. Do come and see my opening, Janice. You'll love it, I promise. And with a rattle of her bracelets, Hannah was gone. Yeah. 
Well done. Very nice. I, I, I figured out how to make sure you got the applause you deserve, Nagini, on that. That's great. A, a fierce bidding war should start for the audio rights with you reading that, because I've, I've read that passage a couple of times. And your, your reading added uh, so, so much to it. So um, so uh, without any further ado, there's a couple of folks who, who've got questions. Uh, and uh, again, we can do the traditional uh, raising of hand on the button thing, which I've got a couple people for, but eventually I'm going to unmute everyone. You can go bananas at that point. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Frederick. Uh, 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 tell us uh, where you're from and, and what your question for uh, Gini is. Oh, hi. Uh, yes, I'm Frederick Jan. I happens to be uh, uh, Guinea's brother. And uh, I live in Naples, and I just wanted to have a, was a was, wish her a very happy birthday. And just to tell her how proud I am of her, and well done, my darling. And yeah, I hope you're going to help me with my book when I start to write it. <laughs> anyway, again, you've done so well. Thank you very much for inviting me on this group. It's been uh, very interesting to see all these people, your friends, and uh, I'm really proud of you, darling. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Now, uh, Gini, uh, Gini insisted that I run the questions past her slightly ahead of time so she wasn't taken by surprise in front of her friends. But I actually have a separate list of questions here for Frederick. Um, you know, Frederick, I'm wondering uh, one thing uh, Gini says on her website is that she's been writing since the year dot. So, as a, as a, as a yeah. family member, is this, is this correct? Uh, it's not only correct it's, it's before the year dot <laughs> she really was <laughs> she really was into all that stuff i mean i was uh, um i left i left school very very early to go into my career and he was I, a dancer he's a world I, famous ballet dancer all right stop and um <laughs> i was always she was always helping with my english uh, which I'm, I'm very appreciative of, you know. Uh, so again, and big thanks. And you know, she was she was into writing, and uh, her English was absolutely impeccable, and uh, it helped me a lot in my earlier days. Yeah. So thank you, Magali. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll leave it to your friends, Magali. Yeah. So yeah. nice. There you Bye. go. <laughs> so when we're looking for blurbs. Uh, Gini, for your next book, Frederick, definitely. I feel like he's got fantastic, <laughs> fantastic blurby potential. Uh, we have uh, next up uh, uh, Annie Perkins, uh, 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 already semi-introduced, but here she is with a question. Um, well, first of all, um, maybe you were talking about accents, and uh, I had this voice agency in Amsterdam from like 1980 for 20 years. And um, because Canadian was never recognized as an accent because they always wanted Americans. And so we christened Canadian Atlantic. And most people chose Mid-Atlantic as opposed to Americans. So there's your thing about accents. <laughs> well, that's... And, then, um, and then the question, I don't really have many questions. I've known Guinea what? Oh, Christ. Since, Since 1980. It's <laughs> a long time. Um, and actually, I think we did a couple of plays together, didn't we? Where yes. you did and also was my stage manager. And it was interesting in the years in Amsterdam from like 1982, 95, they were really the best years ever. And if anyone had experienced those years, it was fantastic. It really was. Because you could be single, you could be gay, you could be mad. It was considered the biggest open psychiatric ward in Europe. And it was. And that was such an inspiration for all of us, you know. So I feel also, because I've known Guinea this long, the, uh, when she asked me to help with this book, um, what was good about it was I can remember everything or the timeline what the book is written in 
So it was great to be able to have that sort of input. I have to say, she can take criticism. <laughs> ah, there you go. And feedback. Both yes, so, I mean, that's it. That's like fantastic. And also, I'd like to say, happy 70th. Well done, Well done. I'm, yes. Camera. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Uh, it, you know, and it's true. One of the things everybody, every person who seems to review anything that uh, Giddy has written often references the authenticity. So obviously yeah. Uh, yeah. that, you know, Annie is supporting that and, and she remembers everything. This is a dangerous That's friend. amazing, that. isn't it? <laughs> dangerous, dangerous friend. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, we have, uh, uh, I think it's a combo. I don't know who's going to ask the question. It's it's uh, it's Trev Ian. So I think that's uh, I see two smiling faces there. So over to you, gentlemen. Okay, it's it's Ian of the the dynamic duo speaking. Uh, firstly, happy birthday, Guinea. Yes. Thank uh, you, darling. Sorry we can't be with you, but uh, we're here. Uh, the wonders of technology. Um, I think the uh, the COVID madness has got a lot to offer the world because we actually just take these meetings for granted now and being able to talk simultaneously across the world. Anyway, um, this was a comment rather than a question. Uh, I was um, intrigued by your choice of uh, reading because elements of Elsevier Science Publishers came floating through me to a certain data entry person um, who may be in this room. I don't know. Uh, who? who? You, darling. Oh, yes, of course. No, you, you missed out the beginning, but I said that the book is rooted in reality. Indeed. Yes, I know, but it's it, fiction. It's absolute fiction. But um, in terms of, I'd just like to say that um, given your um, high ratings for sexual writing, I was really disappointed that those years you wrote the Elsevier Science um, Company magazine that you weren't using that sort of text as we were going along. Anyway, just congratulations. That's all I wanted to say. Big hugs. Thank yes. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I practice <your> safe text. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I was I... going back to accents. Guinea loves plays on words. So I haven't read this book yet. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be some playing on words as well as accents in there. Yeah. You'll love Colin. He does a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Good. It's true. Yes. It's true. It's it, uh, it's funny. I did attempt to sneak in some questions, Ian, about uh, uh, Guinea's time as the editor of, uh, of, a, of a magazine. And uh, much like George Harrison leaving the, the Beatles, you know, he was with them for 10 years and then he, his first solo record is a triple album set. So I feel like <laughs> Giddy had a lot of uh, fabulous sex writing that was probably just <laughs> under, <laughs> under her desk uh, waiting to come out. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, we have uh, uh, Jill Hughes, uh, who, who will say hi and tell us uh, where she's from. Hi, Giddy. How are you? I'm really well, Jill. Thank you. Having a happy birthday, huh? Yes. <laughs> um, I was and wondering. Happy birthday to you for yesterday. Thank you. Uh, it was about a year ago. I was checking my records, and it was about almost just a year ago that we started working together. And so I thought that's pretty good to get a book together in one year. So I wondered um, how long it's how long had you been working on. Um, Janice, before you contacted me, and how um, do you have your next book in the works already? And if so, or if not, uh, when do you think your next book will, when do you think you'll start working on your next one? Okay. Um, Janice uh, has had probably the most, the longest gestation period of any book ever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I first started thinking about writing a book which I'd called Janice in Action right. uh, way back in, in uh, the early 70s. I had the name and I had the title. It was going to be called Janice in Action. Um, 
and then life got in the way and i would i would play around with this idea and i'd write short stories around it and um it took years i mean if the germ of the idea came in 1976 I didn't really start writing it until um, uh, after Philippa, and uh, Philippa was published in 2015. And then um, I would I would try and write a draft, and I'd get nowhere with it, and life would get in the way again. And I was working full time, so it was languishing in the bottom drawer, and it stayed there for so long. I started renaming the book instead of Janice in Action. I was calling it Janice in Action. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Thank you. And then, <laughs> then COVID happened, and I thought um, I was still working full time, but but I had more time because um, the the work didn't dry up completely, but it was less. So I thought I'm going to use this, and um, I found myself a development editor and um who i thanked at the beginning and worked with her very closely chapter by chapter and and karina was um i'm very good at working to deadlines if i have a client and they need a paperback on such and such a date i will do that so having karina with beside me meant that i was setting deadlines and it meant that i had to stop faffing about with this book and actually write it Mm -hmm. she, she'd give me feedback on it and and um so anyway the actual writing happened in during COVID and then the real writing started it was all the revisions and the revising and the revising and the revising and it it went through something like 20 drafts before I sent it off to you yeah now you asked about my next book I hoped to uh to the goddess above that it's not going to take me another 10 years to produce the next one i've had a publisher express interest in what my next book will be she wants a romance and um uh, i'm not very good at writing romances i um so i'll have to do my best to see if i can do it maybe um i'll come up with something which they can call a romance but isn't um, you had mentioned something about something with four women in it this time yes yes i i i'm i'm thinking of of um writing about four women um mm -hmm. and perhaps two of them are sisters and perhaps two of them are lovers um but it's a it's going to be a story about friendship okay but that's still in the gestation phase i'm working on the idea developing the idea with my writers club um, I've written a short story which may turn it into the first chapter of this next book. Um, but that's still very much in gestation phase. And I want to get um, Janice up and running and selling and becoming a bestseller. And um, well, I'm, I won't qualify for the Pulitzer, but um, <laughs> uh, if, if that book takes off, well, then um, I can leave it behind me and focus on the next. And just bask in what you're doing right now. Oh, I'm not a basker. <laughs> I'm more a, more a T instead of a K. <laughs> okay. Enjoy then. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Thank you. A nice question. Thank you. Interesting to note, based on Jill's uh, question there, that you know, if you had actually written uh, becoming Janice in 1976. Setting the book in 1979 and 1980 meant that you know your publisher could mark it as dystopian or something vaguely futuristic, you know. So uh, uh, that's that's kind of a, a funny thing to note that the book is actually set like three or four years after you were originally thinking of starting it. Cool. Uh, yeah. So those are the questions that people have put their hand up for. So so any of you who were sort of thinking that someone else on the call might be smarter or more interesting. It's not the case. Um, there's still a chance to get in a, a, a humdinger of a, of a question, um, uh, whether you are possessed of mid-Atlantic accent or not. Um, so uh, anyone, oh, Ted is in. Ted, you have a question. Yes, hello. 
How Hi, Jean. Hi, Gay. It's nice to see you. Um, it's super to see you. It's, it's long time, long time. Ted and I worked together at the Sydney Opera House. He's a famous, famous theatre director. Yes, it was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, it's lovely to be here. I'm going to have to go, which is why I wanted to say hello. Um, I'll send you a, send you a, an address for Nick Schlieper because oh. you asked about him. Yes. Um, he, he's the most famous lighting director in um, Australia. Priscilla and he was, Queen of the Desert. And I saw him in London just recently because he lit this huge hit um, on at the Haymarket Theatre. The one person, the one person, um, oh, forgotten the name. Sorry? The picture of Doria Gray. All oh, right. Well, yes. We one person. Wanting to forget that. <laughs> anyway, it's great to see you. Have a wonderful birthday. Many happy returns. I look forward to reading the book and the next one. <laughs> Thank and you. we'll be in touch. Yes. Cheers. Thank you. Lovely. And next time you see Nick, give him a big kiss from me, please. Will do. Will okay. do. Bye. Bye bye. It's wonderfully international. I love this. This is great. Uh, so, uh, according to our schedule, uh, we are in the we're still in audience questions, but then there's a magical area called thank yous and goodbyes. Um, uh, uh, Guinea, uh, you could take it from here, I think. Well, um, I'm not one to stand upon your leaving. I think if we've had enough, we can round things up or round things off, or however you say it. Um, has everybody had to, had a chance to say what they want to say if they want? Bob! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So Bob, that was me. I, I thought it would be very clever to unmute everyone so they could talk, but uh, the cumulative power of 27 people's background noise is such that uh, yes. I won't try that again. So uh, I'm going to unmute the folks who put their hands up because they're very, they're extremely well behaved. And they should be, uh, they should be rewarded for their efforts. Here's Ina. Hi, Guinea. Hi, uh, I think I should add a South African accent as well from Cape Town. And uh, yes, very happy birthday to you. And it's indeed, I remember since I met you, uh, I think it must have been about 1990 or so, that you always were aspiring to write and um yes i'm really so proud of the yeah that you've been pr producing uh and that you can celebrate this new novel congratulations guinea thank you enna that means a lot that means a lot. <laughs> enna is herself a published author <laughs> brave I, my, brave path but welcome uh we got Tr Trev and Ian. Uh, maybe now uh, uh, Ian had his turn. Now Trev's going to talk. First of all, uh, uh, happy birthday, uh, Guinea. Thank you, and, darling. And uh, congratulations. Sounds uh, exciting with a new book. Just wondering if Janice was really an homage to Janice Ian. Um, you know, uh, I'm a I'm a Facebook. Facebook buddy of Janice Ian. I, I follow her and I really like her. Um, but no, she's not Janice at all. No. Um, and right. nor is Janice Joplin. Ah. Um, where did I get the name from? I got the name from Janus, the two sided. The two -sided. Oh, right. Yes. Um, because the first Janice. When I was when I was thinking about this character, was was quite mean, mm. and she's softened a bit in in over the years. But I um, I've, I've projected a lot of her duplicity onto other characters, but that's where the name Janice comes from. Mm. Yeah. 
Wow. That ended up being like a fantastic question, like the name, you know, of, of uh, you know, good, good one. Good one, Trev. Well done. Okay. Uh, we have also uh, uh, the mighty uh, Ted Craig. No, Ted's gone. Oh, oh his, hand, his hand was up. <laughs> Ted, are you there? <laughs> oh, Ted, Ted left. Okay. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, those of you who haven't visited uh, Gini's website, uh, which is her name.com, it, it's fabulous. There's all kinds of things up there. One thing that uh, it is her birthday. So in, I don't know how it is in the other parts of the world. In Holland, I understand everyone sits around in a circle and stares at each other. Uh, <laughs> In Canada, in Canada, we have a few other, we have a few other things. Basically, on your birthday, you can make any request you want. Now, it is it is Gee's birthday, and her request of the group is if you can find it in your heart at some point to take a a a photograph of yourself with the book, or if you're shy, maybe the your favorite pet and the book, or failing that, your favorite thing to drink and the book or whatever and the book uh, and send it to uh, her or myself uh, we will make good use of these things because an instagram account people doesn't feed itself you have to have pretty things to put up there and, and uh guinea has one of the world's finest stained glass windows available but she can only use it in so many photos <laughs> before people uh figure it out so uh there you go uh, if there's anyone else who wants to speak, if you want to put your hand up, we do have some time. Um, uh, Marianne McKay says she would like to speak old fashioned by sticking her hand up. Sorry, Marianne, I've got to scroll down here and find you. There, oh, hang on. I'm unmuting you. Can, you can speak. Hi, Chuck. She has no audio connected, according to my. Oh. Man, you have to turn on your microphone. Yeah. Rob's in the same spot. Uh, anyone else? Uh, ooh. Even though Ted's not here, I have a warning sign for Ted. So someone should uh, should tell him that if they're talking to him. Uh, uh, Marianne, still no audio for her. Marianne, if you if you trust me, I know we don't know each other. You can type your question into the comments. That's always a fun thing to do on these things. Uh, but otherwise, uh, oh, here we go, Annie. Um, yes, I'd just like to thank you, Chris. Seriously, because it's really complicated, and I know lots of people are at Guinea's house. We would have been there if we were in Spain. I think it's fantastic you can reach everybody like this. Yeah. And yeah. really, seriously, thank you, mate. Oh, yeah. that's so nice of you to say. And you know what? what's great, uh, uh, Annie, is that this thing where the Dutch like sit in a circle. And, oh, and, stop uh, it. You, you no, know, no. It, it's kept everyone very well behaved. You know, if we if we did this. No, if we it's, did not, this... it's horrible that Guinea will tell you what my first. Uh, uh, exposure to this was, uh, I think one of my girlfriends, her family was, there was a birthday or something, and we walked into the room and everyone was sat in a circle with a cup of coffee and a piece of cake. And then you had to introduce yourself to everybody and say, happy birthday, <laughs> whoever it is, right? And after 25 people, it gets boring, <laughs> okay? And I've never been to anyone any other birthday since. Oh wow, that's really <laughs> shut, no, it, shut it down. Down. Not in the Netherlands. <laughs> it was too much. Yeah. Well, it's, it beats like rolling cheese down a hill or something. Like yes. It's, 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 there's other there's other ways to be incredibly uh, looking for mountains in Holland. You know, like there's other ways to lose the thing. But but thank you, everyone. At, uh, Karina, who's who's muted right now, is actually behind the scenes keeping that group of people in Kini's <laughs> house very well behaved. She's ruling, <laughs> ruling with an iron fist. You can see it just out of frame. She has a hammer in her hand. So well, and they're not sitting in a circle. 
No, they're not. Uh, Very good. Karina, what happened to our plan with the circle? Did you, you know? We're in a circle. Oh, yeah. We are, we are. Oh, yeah. and, and it, <laughs> Annie, I have a good therapist for you, you know, for the next time there's a birthday party. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gini, over to you for the for the last word. Okay. There are some faces who who I haven't seen for such a long time. It's so nice that you're here, Bella. I'm really glad that you came. And Bob, my apologies because I forgot to send you the link, but you found it anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Can I say are... something about the circle? <laughs> yes, please, Bob. Yes. Please. You, you claim that circle led to good behavior. It's the exact opposite. When they take the circle out and when they so call line up in a queue, they form a circle. So the <laughs> queue in the Netherlands comes from 270 degrees. <laughs> and all I do is I say, I'm nearly 80. I'm going first. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. What are you doing up north? Why aren't you in Amsterdam? Don't You don't have to answer that question. No, and I won't. Because I didn't think so. Yeah. Amsterdam is, Amsterdam is the pits. It's Not for of, me. I'm still having fun. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. There, there's, there's a kind of tradition with these uh, calls, these Zoom or whatever we're using today, CallBridge, Canadian company, CallBridge, uh, where everyone's fine until the last three minutes. And then suddenly in the last three minutes, people start misbehaving. Like Bob, Bob is venturing somewhat towards a sort of civil war type in, in 1964 <laughs> i won a drag a beauty queen contest my name was miss behavior in 1972 i won a second one in the netherlands and i was miss drache <laughs> ah, yeah miss drache translated as misbehavior I was hoping. Yeah. I was hoping. Uh, yeah. See, like I said, the last three minutes are golden. I was like, I, you know, this is the part that when people watch this, we did record this, Bob. So you know, if people want to reach out and, and do the uh, the tell-all biography. They don't know where to find it. <laughs> um, uh, Gini, I'm going to unmute everyone. It'll be very dramatic, but it's for all of you people who've been sitting patiently, uh, uh, building up your energy for this great book. Uh, big thank you to Iguana Books. Uh, they're wonderful people to work with. Uh, they made it great. They made many left and right turns very quickly. I've worked in publishing for a long time. Not a lot of, not a lot of publishers are that nimble or open-minded or do it with a smile and with a mid-Atlantic mid accent. Um, the, um, uh, I'll unmute everybody here and uh, you could all uh, shout whatever's on your mind uh, or, uh, or happy birthday. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do a W more now. I'm going to do a